Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite troll, Jackie Ina. Jackie, 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 Jackie. Today we're going to be doing a video using Instagram or social media hyped brands. I picked these brands in particular not to like belittle or shade them. A lot of these brands are actually brands that I use all the time, but a lot of them get tons of clout from Instagram. So I think a lot of times it's just easy to like associate them with Instagram because that's where they mainly grow from and thrive from. And we see a lot of them on that particular platform. And I tried to pick out as many items as I possibly could to do a full face using these brands. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. But if you are not a part of the Jackie Ina family and you haven't hit that subscribe button, I am judging you. Smash that subscribe button and join the Jackie Ina family. Did I do it right this time? It's right there, right? I think I got it this time. Can I just be honest real quick? Well, I'm gonna do that anyway. You know how I am. For the longest time, I didn't wanna feature this foundation. The Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation just recently launched a couple weeks ago and everyone's raving about it. I have no doubt that this is probably a really phenomenal product. All of the reviews I've seen have been glowing phenomenal and I really do actually like her products. I like Huda, I think she's really nice. And I think Mona's nice too, her sister. I think they're super sweet women, but I've had reservations about featuring this foundation on my channel. I'm gonna share my opinion and that's what you guys come here for, but I have a hard time distinguishing when someone really truly does celebrate diversity and when they are pandering. And I know that that sounds really harsh, but I've talked about why I don't really use a ton of Huda's products in my channel before. The first thing I thought when this foundation first launched was, that's amazing. Are you gonna put these women on your Instagram page though? The, the women that are darker than tan, the women that are darker than Beyonce. I'm just asking if they're buying your product, I wanna know. I wanna know the answer to this question. Huda is from the Middle East. I've lived in the Middle East and just what I see on social media and just from and living there myself, I know how people feel about darker skin. There's tons of colorism and a lot of deep rooted issues. And so my issue with this was I wanna know if you just want the quaint or if you really genuinely are trying to be a part of this movement. I mean, I think you definitely should have a, a diverse line of foundations anyway, but there is such thing as pandering. And as a consumer, I like to be able to differentiate when, which is which. And if you don't like that, that's cool. If you don't think it's that deep, you have every right to think that. But that's just instantly where my mind went when I first saw this product and why I really didn't feel comfortable featuring it on my channel. However, because the requests are still rolling in, sometimes I will kind of overlook that and still give you my thoughts on the product, but please understand that when you're reviewing stuff, like you're going to get everything. You're not just going to get the demo, the application. You are going to get my thoughts on the brand, on the marketing, on the, you're gonna get all of that. That's what a review is for. If you don't like it, you can just watch somebody else who is gonna push coupon codes down your throat 24 seven. Um, anyway, so this was given to me in PR and they asked me to fill out a survey, like kind of what is it that you use in NARS? What is it that you use in MAC? So we can figure out what your shade is. So okay, I went along with it. At that point, I hadn't decided whether or not I was gonna feature it. I wanted to gauge you guys' interest first, which later on became overwhelming. So here we are. The Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation comes in two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 30. I'm not counting that, I, I remember it is 30. The two colors that I have are Chocolate Truffle 540G and Nutmeg, which is 520G. She also created a foundation brush. Looks like a pretty good amount of density in that brush. And it comes with a complexion perfection pre-makeup base. I think it's always important, especially when you're new to complexion products, to have a base that goes with it because a lot of people just don't take the time to read ingredients. I really kind of feel like you should, but I mean, at the same time, it's like, I don't wanna have to do all that. I wanna just put the product on, do what I gotta do. So she created a base that I would hope probably is compatible with the foundation. This is supposed to be like, Instagram makeup in a bottle. Like it's supposed to be the fullest of full coverage and you're supposed to be able to like full filter. Like the name's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so as for this base though, um, this primer I should say, it's pretty creamy. Brushy matte thick too. There's no tacky feeling or anything. It's very dense and it's very thick. I'm gonna swatch chocolate truffle. Fi Whoa, that was a lot of back. Fire there. Fair, light, medium, tan, and rich. So my colors are in the rich category. 
and it is the oh Okay. Chocolate truffle is the second to last color. Hot fudge is the very last color. It seemed like there was a lot more colors. Like I thought, I would have guessed for sure there was like four or five more colors darker than mine, but anyway, let's just figure out if chocolate truffle is actually my color first. Primer does leave a little bit of shine. It doesn't completely matte the skin down, but I'm not, not opposed to that, it's fine. Oh, chocolate truffle's pretty rich. What does she look like? That's a pretty rich color. I don't smell any scent. I did see a review that said the primer had a pretty strong scent. I don't know if maybe my senses are just messed up, but I don't really, there's a smell there, but it's not like overpowering or offensive or anything. That's just me, I guess. This is Nutmeg, which is 520G. But then again, I wouldn't be able to get much use out of that. Like that's pretty rich, even for my summer foundation shade. So I'm gonna go with Nutmeg, which is 520G. How about the fact that I was doing an Instagram live the other day and I was using vagina wipes? to wipe off the swatches. No one told me until about 30 minutes into the live session. Shout out to that person who let me know because I had no idea. I'm gonna take the RCMA No Color Powder. I've been getting tons of requests for this for a long time now. You guys know I love to set my primer down with a little bit of powder, so I'm gonna do that with this. This is supposed to be the most colorless translucent powder on the market right now. I am a little bit of a skeptic though because I feel like white can be troublesome and problematic on so many different ways. And everyone that also swears by this powder has dry skin, so I'm hoping that it will do what I want it to and that it will help control oil and minimize the shine of my skin. So on the back of a beauty blender, I'm just pressing that in. I never not do this. If I'm gonna use a powder, I wanna know how it's gonna work in real time. You know, like I always set my primer with powder. I know y'all have seen the reviews, okay? I don't want too much filter. I'm going for a little bit more Aiden than I am slumber. You know, we just gotta scale it back a little bit. It feels like a gel, like a bouncy gel. Whoa, whoa, ho, ho. we gotta work quick. Ooh, okay, she's very thick. There is a, whoa, is that the brush of the foundation? It literally smells like a Lancome perfume or something. <laughs> That's different. It smells nice, I just don't know if I'd want a foundation with that strong of a scent. Like, what would that do for me, you know? Oh God. It's too dark. I'm trying to figure out what went wrong here. I definitely told them I was a Macau. And it's looking super red to me. Am I tripping? Am I, is it just me? Am I, y'all see what I'm saying? I'm tri am I tripping? Um, what went wrong? I mean, like I gave my exact to a T foundation shades and I just feel like this is a little rich and I really strongly feel like this is probably going to be one of those foundations that will oxidize. I've seen it on everyone else. I'm gonna need whoever the shade expert was on their team to, uh, Get this together. I'm definitely going to have to lighten this up with other products, concealers, something. It looks to be pretty full coverage with that little bit that I applied. I'm gonna move on and conceal. We will hopefully be able to correct and even this out. I may have to skip a little bit of steps, but we'll see. The next thing I am gonna use is a concealer that was like all over social media for a while. This is Amazing Cosmetics. I guess they only have concealers. Like, I don't know, do they have other stuff? I don't really know much about this brand. But I feel like everyone raved about them. They're supposed to be super full coverage and very, very uh, flawless and everyone raves about them. And then I feel like the wave was here with Amazing Cosmetics concealers and they went away. Like no one really talks about them anymore. But I've had this in my kit stash for a while, so I'm gonna give it a try. The color that I'm using is Zork Caramel. <laughs> Why does it look like it's already half used? Like I'm just, y'all trying to cheat. You know when they say three grams and then the packaging is three grams with the contents inside <laughs> is 2.8. Yes, I do check. All right, so this foundation is just, <laughs> see what you do is you have to over conceal now because it's too dark. Whoa. Whoa. I wanted this to actually be a wearable look, so let me stop playing. I'm going to kind of heavily highlight without doing the ghost effects, you know, without doing flashback Mary type of situation. I'm gonna also put this along my jawline for some reverse contouring. This concealer runs very pink. 
Oh, today's just an off day, man. Today's just an off day for me. What's going on? Can we work our way around this? I'm gonna try my best. What I'm hoping is that I can get some prayers from all of you. These are the contour sticks. Well, they're pigment sticks from Iconic London. Everybody. Everybody that does Instagram makeup tutorials uses Iconic London. I don't know where they came from. I don't know who invented them. I don't know where they started. I don't know where they get their money from. They pop up out of nowhere and I'm always seeing people doing the drip, drippity drop tutorials with the highlighters. And they also do a lot with the contouring sticks. The one that I have is in the shade 4.3. This is the ones that they chose for me, the darkest one that I have. And I don't really think that's like, literally by foundation color. I'm I'm not hovering, oh, I'm pushing it into my face and I'm not getting anything. Okay, got it. We just won't contour today, got it. All's well that ends well. We'll just blend this out, you know, no big deal. It's fine. I'm gonna blend in such a way that hopefully this concealer blends in with the foundation, lightens it up just a little bit. So far, the coverage of this concealer looks okay. It's a bit heavy for me. I prefer like a medium concealer that I can kind of layer on versus a full, but you know, it's doing what it's doing. I also do have to say I prefer a concealer wand to this just because it's just easier to get, you know, it's just easier to use. The pinkness of it all is not my preference, but it doesn't look bad. I still feel like the foundation is messing with my eyes. We gotta find a way to fix this, y'all. We. We really gotta find a way to fix this. Um, uh, ah, oh. <sighs> okay. Beauty Bakery is actually probably more Instagram famous than RCMA No Color Powder is, and I feel like the white would not be in my best interest in this case. I don't, bless you. I want this to actually be a tutorial that you guys believe that I tried to make work and make do. And I really could use some yellow, so I'm gonna take the flower powder from Beauty Bakery and set under the eyes and then also set the rest of my face to hopefully balance and brighten up the foundation. I think that a lot of times y'all think I just roast these brands for fun. And sometimes I do, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I do. But I really wanna make these products work, I really actually do. So far, that already looks better. The yellow toned down the pink and the shine. You know how when things are shiny, it just looks even more distracting? Just messing with my head in so many ways. And then I'm going to swirl that same powder all over my face. This may be the one time where you actually want a little bit of flashback <laughs> that might help things a little bit. Foundation looks a little bit more balanced, a little bit more balanced. We may have to skip contouring or bronzing altogether, but we'll see when we get there. Um, Random, somebody decided to invent eyebrow cushions. Like who said, my question is, y'all pay these people to sit in a boardroom and think of things like eyebrow cushions and magnetic eyelashes. I'm just, what? Apparently Iconic London has these new eyebrow cushion kits where it's a cushion, an actual cushion for your eyebrows. On the box, it says up your game because size does matter. I don't get what that has to do with brows, but okay. So it's actually a really cute kit. I don't know if this is functional for me though, because it's like a lot when I can just throw one pencil in my bag. Personally, that's just the way that I'm looking at it. This is the Sculpt and Boost Eyebrow Cushion. You get six grams. The color that I have is deep. So you open it up and you get a dual ended. That's actually really cool. You get a dual ended spoolie slash um, slanted eyeshadow brush, a slanted liner brush, and then the actual cushion, obviously it's sealed off. So you get more of a warmer deep brown and then a more ashier gray deep brown. I prefer my brows to be a little bit on the ashier side. So I'm going to take, actually, you know what I'm gonna do for the purposes of demoing? I'm gonna take the lighter one first, see what I get out of that, and then I'll go in with the darker ashier one. The goal is that hopefully they actually show up on my skin tone because the contour sticks, the way that the contour sticks was set up, iconic. I wanna refund and I didn't even buy the product, okay? I'm just saying, I'm reclaiming my time for that. So with the spoolie head, this is actually so cute. With the spoolie head, I'm just going to brush out these brows and going in with the lighter shade, oh, whoa, okay. With the lighter shade, you know what? The fact that, I don't know why this is the stupidest statement ever, but the fact that this is wet is bothering me. <laughs> but duh, it's a cushion, it's supposed to be wet. Let's just hope that this has some type of miraculous long wear formula. 
So far the dark, the lighter brown's actually kind of dark. That's impressive. It's actually showing up on my skin tone. I didn't think it was. This reminds me a lot of like the dip brows and you know, like the gel type of brow tools and stuff. And I feel like I've been through that phase. I just prefer pencil, but it does work and it actually looks good. This is like the liquid eyeliner of brow tools, in my opinion. Okay, let's throw in a little bit of darker ash here. Whoa, that's, whoa. I don't want no issues with this color. This is a nice dark color right here. This one's good. So it's wet when you apply and then it does dry down. Start slicing and oh, we got a little overzealous on aisle three. I am so sorry. Okay, let me just take this spoolie and there we go. Whew, okay. I normally don't like the applicators that come with the palette or anything, but this little spoolie tip, if you use the sharp side, you can actually get really good like, Hairs. And the thing that also concerns me is in between each application, obviously you're sitting here with this thing open, exposing it to more air, which could also cause it to dry out quicker. By the way, I am noticing some slight creasage right underneath my eyes. Personally, that actually doesn't bother me. Like no one's gonna be that close. If you're that close to my face anyway, we have issues. A little bit of creasing directly underneath the eye does not bother me. It's really not something that is a big deal to me, but I just wanted to note that if you guys want like a full proof concealer, this so far does not appear to be one. And it could also be that it's just inevitable. Like it's just, you know, if you have folds there, things are going to crease. It's just, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Queen Natasha slays again. Natasha Denona is not here to play with y'all no more. She's done playing with y'all in 2017. This is one of her latest launches, the Sunset Palette. I could live without these sleeves though. They're like a little floppy and they're just, I just find them really annoying. And then they're like hard to rip off. I'm gonna start off with this shade here and I'm gonna blend that, the, the pigmentate, like no one can deny the pigmentation of her eyeshadows. They're expensive, I will definitely say that. Just, I just shake my head. One swipe of that brown. Look at my pinky, Lisa. No, no! Lisa! Anyway, I'm gonna take Sinai, which is this more muted orange, and I'm blending that. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. I love putting orange in the crease. These are very powdery shadows. If you are a swirler, you're gonna have issues. I, actually I am a swirler, <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. I actually do a combination of swirling and patting my brushes in the shadows when I'm applying, so just be mindful of that. A lot of these super, super high pigment shadows tend to do that. They do tend to have a lot of kickback, but her shadows are not patchy. That's one thing I will say, they are not patchy. And boy, do I have a lash for this look, girl. Y'all about to be shook. I'm also gonna sweep that along my bottom lash line. I didn't add any more color. We are going to take this dark brown, the super pigmented one that I was messing with earlier, and apply this from inner to outer corner, the halo. Actually patting this in more than I am blending it out, because I feel like that gives me more control when I'm working with. With my finger, this color here is looking fiery, flaming hot. I'm gonna take my finger and dab that on the center of my lid. This is gorgeous, oh my God. In most palettes, this type of orangey color, it's like too orange sometimes. This has a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. It's not just orange. I don't know what the heck I was waiting for. I guess I was really waiting to like give you guys the tea on this palette. It's been in my collection for like several weeks now, all right? I'm not doing that again. I'm not holding out again for YouTube. For a little bit more of a fireball effect, I'm gonna go for this. This one was more orangey yellow. This one's more yellowy orange. I've never seen a color like that in a palette. I'm gonna take that and go directly on top. Oh my, that is such a freaking gorgeous color. The Sunset Palette, I couldn't think of a more appropriate name. And lots of yellows and oranges, but there's like versatility to them, whereas most palettes, I think they just usually throw in a bright, orange and a bright yellow and no varying shades in between. These look like varying shades of oranges. Oranges. <laughs> this palette is, I'm pretty sure, more than $100. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that everyone should go out and buy, buy, buy. But I'm saying if you are considering it, it's definitely worth the splurge. And of course, I'm a chocolate girl. I love me some <laughs> warm, fiery tones. And then this yellow sparkly color, I'm gonna pop that on my inner tear duct. 
what better way than to use the queen of Instagram herself, Ms. Wake Up and Makeup. She started Iris Beauty a couple years ago. It is her eyelash company. They have some bomb lashes. Sri Racha is one of my favorite prayer. How fitting is Sri Racha lash for this look though? Like fire hot eyes, spicy, and Sri Racha lash. I don't know, maybe I just thought, maybe, okay. Hella corny, Jackie, move on. I think I'm gonna skip on bronzer because I've already expressed some concerns with the color of the foundation. What I didn't show you at the beginning of this video because I actually already did it off camera and then I was like, I should have saved that for the tutorial. I use the Farsala Unicorn Essence every day. It's moisturizing, it's almost like a serum, but they also advertise it as a primer. But we're not talking about this in this demo. We are talking about Farsali's newest product, which I'm a little bit of a skeptic of because it looks a little difficult to use. That is the Jelly Bean. It is a highlighter in jiggly jelly form. The highlighter is twerking. The highlighter got more bounce than I do. Oh, oh, it's almost gonna fall out. So I was watching a video on Sal's Instagram page. Sal is the co-owner of Farsali. And it was really interesting, him telling the story of why they got the idea of this jelly bean highlighter. He was saying he was so tired of his wifey, Farah. Hey girl, I love you girl. Farah and Sal started Farsali and he noticed how she would go from liquid to powder and then setting spray. And liquid to powder and then setting spray when it came to layering on different highlighting products. So they created jelly beam to give that wet, look without the wetness of being wet, but also without the powderiness being powdery. Like it's like all fused in one. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. I get it. What I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna skip the brush and just use my fingertips. And then, ooh, ooh that's pretty, ooh. I feel like you have a little bit more control with the finger. Things just tend to get real streaky real quick when you use brushes sometimes, so you really have to be careful. Build it up a little bit more so you can actually see what it looks like. Here's with Jelly Bean, and here's without. I think it looks really pretty. Let's try with a brush on the other side. Okay, 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 I'm getting there. Okay, yeah, we, we, we just gotta work quick. We gotta work real quick. I can see why people would say this is difficult to work with, but I think that your problems are solved by just putting it on with your hand. This dries down so quick that it's like, you gotta really, really work and swipe it into the skin. I do think, I put a little bit more on this side. I do think, ugh, I put on a lot. I definitely feel like less is more with products like these. Like I just don't care to have an Eiffel Tower looking highlighter. I don't find it necessary. If you wanna take it there with this product, you can, but I just feel like, this is much more flattering than this side. Color Rain pretty much rules Instagram with their lip products. They are killing it. I'm gonna take Tootsie, which is a dark brown, and I'm actually gonna be using that as a liner around the perimeter of my mouth. It's like a dark reddish brown, like a really, 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 really dark reddish brown. I thought Tootsie was going to be dark brown. It's definitely, and this is my first time wearing it, by the way. It's definitely more red, but it's, fine because it actually complements the look so it is what it is. I'm gonna take pink cafe with two F's by the way <laughs> that's hella random and I'm going to dab that in the center and then I added a little bit of butter love also in the center. I'm gonna take this Kalux glitter gloss. Kalux is actually more known on Twitter but you know social media brands you gotta get in how you fit in. This is a glittery gold gloss and that's <laughs> when the wig comes out to play. Am I serving you Texas cheerleader yet? <laughs> okay, so let's just round up everything that we tried today, what stood out to me, what I could pass on. Starting off with the most popular, I think, of the bunch would probably be the Huda Beauty Full Filter Foundation. So far, I do think it looks good. I am noticing a little bit of texture and shine in this area. It could be the concealer. It could be the way that I paired it with the powder. I'm not sure yet. As far as that, like, flawless, no filter look. I'm I'm personally not seeing anything more miraculous than what I use with my bases anyway. But just, it, it, was, it was nice. It was a nice foundation. I would continue to use it, but just not this color. This lip though took on a life of its own. I almost feel like the look is competing with the eye. That's okay, I don't have to be all matchy matchy all the time, whatever. I love Colored Rain's lip product and I also really like K-Lux Cosmetics. They also have this like body bronzer. I was going to use that and then I was just like, well, I'm not really, I'm not giving you chest and I'm not giving you shoulders, so there's no point. But those are my thoughts on those brands. The Amazing Concealer was 
not that amazing personally. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I don't know why I'm just so like jaded right now. Like I'm, I'm feeling like I didn't really try anything that was like, that's revolutionary until I got to the brow cushion. I don't know whose idea it was, whoever it was, you deserve a promotion and a raise. This was low key popping and I might actually, I might actually continue using that one. That's me eating my words. Sometimes I do eat my words. I was really ready to heavily clown this and I was ready for it to look foolish and stupid, but she's snatched in the brow area in case you don't notice. Sasha Denona, how you doing? I think Natasha's eyeshadow quality and quality of her products in general are phenomenal. You definitely get, I, I can't say you get where you pay for it. Could they be cheaper? Absolutely. I don't think that this is an upwards of $100 or more palette. Personally, I think it is expensive even for me and I'm boo I, I don't mind spending the coins on the makeup, but at least you know that you are getting, you know, quality for what you pay for. It is substantially, in my opinion, better than your everyday average shadow palette. We all know how I feel about the lashes. I'll definitely pass on the Iconic London contouring sticks. There wasn't even a good enough shade for me to highlight with either. They were too pink. And I will definitely be using the Farsali Jelly Beam in future looks and tutorials, both on and offline. Cause a lot of times you guys think that just because I show it on camera one time, I don't actually use it anymore. Um, I have a life off of YouTube and I have another routine off of YouTube too. Okay, so it's been about three hours of wear. I wanted to check back in with you guys with the Huda foundation. So I guess you see what it looks like in real time without all the bright lights, like in normal lighting. I have a normal, like a healthy amount of shine showing through. It looks pretty good. So far, no oxidation yet. It's looking way more olive than it actually is in person. Like when I look in the mirror, I don't feel like the distinction between, you know, technology, just be trying to snitch on you. You okay i think that starting out she actually did a pretty good job at having a fair amount of super super light shades to medium shades to the deeper dark range as well do you see what i see okay so there's a little bit more balance the the mirror is helping to show you what i see i don't think it looks bad i think it looks pretty good the shade range gets thumbs for me i did see nima tang's review and she thought the dark the darkest shade was gonna work for her and it was not it was not. But I think when you factor in what ratio of each category she had, she did a pretty good job. Good job on you, Hitta. Hopefully this will start implementing more changes in your brand and you'll start being more aware of the women and the men who use your products. And we'd like to see more of them on your page, honey. I don't know if we're gonna ever get that ever. The kids are watching, girl. Nothing has creased. Maybe a little bit here, but from back here, it could be much worse. Like I've seen much worse creasage up in this area. I don't necessarily know if I'm seeing that filter look. I already have plenty of foundations that do that already. Nothing has budged, bro. Like these brows and even the lip is flawless. Well, I hope that you guys found this helpful. This was fun, doing something different, going outside of my comfort zone. I was a little worried at first. If you are not already a part of the Jackiana family, I'm gonna ask you one more time. I'm gonna ask you one more time to hit that button, okay? Come back, don't be a stranger now. I'm gonna always be here. I got over 700 videos. Let me just help you out and put one right here to make it more convenient for you. It's right, it's just, you might as well click it. It's already there, go ahead. You ain't doing nothing else anyway. You ain't doing nothing else. You're supposed to be doing homework and you ended up here. Now you're gonna have to pay for it. Go ahead and click the next tutorial. Thank you.